it's consolidated. There's moisture floating around above you, but you'll notice that clouds can be above you and there can be no rain all at the same time. Are y'all with me today? And yet, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord said, tell the people your atmosphere is pregnant. What does that mean? It means I began to see the clouds. And the Lord said, if you send up the proper moisture into the cloud, sooner or later the clouds will going to get dark. It's going to get heavy enough for it to no longer keep the rain up there. Y'all know that. Y'all got to talk back to me. Again. So, 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 you're going to get to a place if you send up the right amount of moisture into the air, what moisture is that? Your prayers, your faith, your words, your confession, your praise, your worship. When you begin to lift that into the atmosphere, when it goes out of your mouth, it's going up in the air and it's getting up in the atmosphere and the clouds that are above you are getting heavier and heavier, which means sooner or later, rain is coming. Amen. Pastor Joanne, I'm going to catch the right church in just a few minutes. And the reason why I started laughing was because as I declared that over the people on Sunday at my church, I began to hear the prophet Elijah speaking when he said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And then I walk up to this platform tonight, and here on the platform, there is a word on a post-it note that says, I hear the sound of help on the way. Seems to me like God needed me to put that uh, that prelude in for somebody tonight that your help is on the way. That rain is coming in your life. That weeping may endure for a night for somebody, but joy. Cometh in the morning. Do me a favor. Don't just say joy cometh, but say joy is coming. Joy is coming. Matter of fact, say if you believe it, just go ahead and declare my joy is here. My joy is here. Hallelujah. Woo. And so tonight I want to go. I do honor the Lord for the ministry gift that is Pastor Joe and Howard. Can you clap your hands and praise the Lord for the honor of God? Yes. So Hallelujah. Um, a woman of great faith. Go with me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke. And if you don't mind, it's my custom that we rest on our feet for the reading of the word of God. You would stand for the reading of the word. Luke chapter number 7. My dear sister, in the, and I guess that's Black Record, how have you been doing? A lot better. A lot better. Well, we don't see, I, I believe in for total freedom. Yes. Yes. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. A lot better is not enough for me. I, I told y'all last time I wasn't settling for the body getting warm. Those of y'all that were here, y'all know what I'm talking about. I said, I'm not settling for the body getting warm. I came to see the body get back. It's got to sneeze seven times. and I got to hand it back alive. Y'all going to help me in a minute. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. If you, don't, if you didn't hear last, last time's message, go on, the, go on the live and go watch it. Go watch the stream because you need to hear last time's message when I was here just last week. Just last week, I was here, and the message was, put your weight on it. Put your weight on it. And when the problem that you're dealing with, when you put your weight on it, when you understand that the greater one is down on the inside of you, it's not feeling your weight. It's feeling the weight of the pressure of the glory of God that rests on your life. That's why it's imperative that you have a relationship with God, a consistent relationship with God. So that you can build up your weight class. Because it's dangerous. Say this with me. It's dangerous, yeah, it's dangerous. to be a lightweight believer. To be a lightweight believer. In a heavyweight fight. In a heavyweight fight. Amen. Luke chapter 7. Beginning at verse number 11. And it came to pass the day after. And he went into a city called Nain. 
and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man being carried out. Lord, I feel my yeah. help in here tonight. Ha! Good God, I feel my help. Yeah. Amen. Sure. My hand is on fire right now. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much of the pe much people of the city were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, okay, let me translate it in 21st century. Quit crying. Amen. He said unto her, quit crying. Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And, oh Jesus. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, this is a great, that a great prophet is risen up among us and that God has visited his people. Thus far the reading of the word of God. On your way, God bless your people as you receive your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. On your way down, if you would help me to bring emphasis to my message by looking someone eyeball to eyeball, make contact with them, make sure you're looking at them in their face because you're getting ready to make a prophetic declaration to that person next to you. Tell them these words, and it's the subject of my message tonight. Tell them the funeral has been canceled. The funeral has been canceled. Yes. Now, if that neighbor did not praise the Lord when you said that, that neighbor didn't have a hold of faith with you. So find you another neighbor that will believe the word of the Lord tonight and look them in the eye and tell them. Matter of fact, my dear heart in the back right there, I'm declaring it directly to you. And I'm come on, dude, y'all find somebody else. But I found my other person. Dear heart, the funeral has been. assignment to make this declaration in this house tonight. Oh God. I've been praying and praying ever since Pastor Joanne asked me last week, Bishop, will you come back and preach again? And, and she said, is your schedule open? And God has opened things up just for me to be here tonight. Praise the Lord. And I told her I would be here and I've been praying and saying, God, what am I supposed to say when I get back to the healing road, Life Abundant Ministries? What am I supposed to say? And all week I've been praying and praying and praying and praying. And I think it was maybe a couple of days ago, I heard in my spirit, the funeral has been canceled. And it kept rising up again and again, even to the point where today I started looking at other messages, other stuff, and, and this, it wouldn't register with me. I just kept hearing over and over and over again, the funeral has been canceled. I don't know who I'm here to preach to tonight, but the Spirit of God has sent me prophetically to declare in this atmosphere that the funeral has Last week, we walked through the book of Kings, a part of the book of Kings, chapter 4, and we saw the prophet of God go when a woman, he had prophesied that a woman was going to have a child, and she, had, she didn't ask him for anything. She was acquainted with, we talked about, how she had become so acquainted with disappointment. So much so that when the, when the man of God said, what is it that you want? And went as far as to say, you're going to have a child by this time next year. She said, no, man of God, don't tell me that because she was so used to disappointment. 
Many people sitting in this room right now, you're so used to disappointment. You've been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and you've been fasting and you've been doing the formula that they taught you to do to try to get heaven to move. Let me just tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot manipulate heaven to do what you want it to do when God wants to. Listen, you're not going to be able to do it. Yes, you need faith to move God. Yes, it takes faith to move the hand of God. He says, but without faith, I can't preach without talking about faith. Ah, without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Faith moves God. Yes, it does. But it will not allow you to manipulate the hand of God just to do what you want when you want it done. Sometimes God will allow you to walk through some things for a season because not only is he building your faith, he's building your endurance, he's building your strength, but there are sometimes other people that are watching you while you're going through it and their faith is being built while they're watching you go through your storm. And you say, but God is a good God. Yes, he is. He knows how much you can bear and he's not going to put more on you than your faith can bear up under. Amen. No, not talking up in here. He's not going to put more on you or allow more to come in your life than your faith can bear up under. So whatever you're facing right now, you might think you're about to give up. You might think you're about to quit. You might think your life is over. But I came in here tonight to tell you, you have an, apparently, you have enough faith to bear up under it. You just don't know it yet. I need to encourage your heart tonight and tell you, you've got enough faith. It's got on the inside. Now reach down and there and grab it. Your bank account, what conditions 
going on in your marriage, what condition is going on with your children, what condition is going on in your mind, in your emotions, in, in your psyche. I don't care. Don't you get so to a place where you quit and you give up. This woman said, no, it can't happen, but she had to keep trying. I need you to grab a hold to enough faith tonight that says, I'm going to keep on pushing. Bible says she has the baby and when she has this baby he grows up a little bit and when he grows up a little bit he's out there with his daddy in the field working and all of a sudden he says to his daddy daddy my head my head one thing you've got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, many times when the enemy is going to attack, one of the first places he's going to attack is in your head. I gotta get me. He's right. He's coming for your head. He's coming for your head. He's coming for your head. Oh, wait a minute. I hear the Holy Ghost. He's dealing with me right now. Listen, for some of you that are married, women, you need to cover your husband because the devil is coming for him. Yes. Oh, what? What? They, they got quiet, Pastor Joanne. They got real quiet right there. Don't they understand that biblically the husband is assigned to be the head of the home? He's yes. supposed to be the priest of the home. He's yes. supposed to be the prayer warrior of the house. And so if the enemy's going to come to try and tear up a house, one of the first places he's going to hit is the head. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that the husband's supposed to rule over the wife and mistreat her and all that stuff. He's supposed to be a servant leader. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Brethren that are in the room, if you're a husband, you're supposed to be a servant leader. That means when you serve like Jesus served, he said, husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Amen. He's the head of the church. The Bible says the husband is the head of the wife. That's what the book says. Now, if y'all got to get mad with me, just get mad. It doesn't matter. Just go read the Bible. But again, if the enemy is going to attack, even in your home, one of the first places he's going to attack is the head of the house. So ladies that are in this room, pray for your husband, cover your husband, encourage your husband because he needs you, because the enemy is gunning for him because he knows if he strikes the head, everything else gets sick. Yeah, come on. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yes. They were shouting real good when I was talking about faith. When I start talking about about divine order in the house, we, we get quiet. <laughs> Even if you're single, you should holler, "Amen." Amen. Because I'm preaching truth. Amen. Amen. There must be order, and the place the enemy is going to attack first is in your personal life. Who was? Where is he going to attack? Head. In your head. So you've got to learn not to lose your head. <laughs> Don't lose your head. When you start talking about I'm going to give them a piece of my mind, that means you're losing part of your head. And so now this woman, she, her son, he actually ends up dying. Y'all know the story. We preached it last week real good. Ah, the son dies and she takes the son and puts him in the prophet's chamber. She does not do what is normal to do and go bury the baby. She put, she took him, instead of putting him down, she took him up. And so she gets him in the prophet's chamber. I'm going to fast forward because I told y'all last week the whole story. Prophet comes back, lays on the boy's body. He puts his weight on it. The first time the boy grows warm, the second time he sees it seven times and comes back to life. That's because God had declared that the funeral has been canceled. But now we come to this text in the book of Luke and here is a woman now, Jesus had just performed a miracle in another city, and now he's headed towards Nain, seemingly for no reason. Seemingly for no reason. Do me a favor, if you don't mind, helping me preach tonight. Encourage your neighbor and tell them, hey neighbor, 
He's on the way. He's on the way. See, their neighbor didn't know how to respond. They didn't catch the prophetic word that you just gave them. See, when I say stuff like that, I'm not just saying it for effect. Hallelujah. I promise you, I'm not just saying it for effect. I promise you there's a prophetic mantle behind the words that I just said. He's on the way. I know he's everywhere at all times. I know that I'm not oblivious to him being omnipresent. But have you ever had a moment in your life where you just needed God to make his presence known to just do what we call in the earth realm, show up? Yes. Come on, y'all got to talk to me in here. If you've never been there, then you don't know what I'm talking about. But I've had some moments where I needed God just to Amen. show yes. up. I needed him to flex his arm. I needed him to move. I needed him to do something yes. and do it quick. I yes. needed him to show up. And so I have declared to you today by the word and the mind of yes. God that he is on the way. He's not far off. He's not far from your house. He's coming to see about yes. you. He's about to show up in yes. your city. Yes. Hallelujah. I said he's about to show up in your situation. Yes. I said he's about to show up. He, 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 he's about to show up for you. Here's another one. I, I, I'm sorry for all these touch your neighbors tonight, but the Bible says we're any two or three. Yes. 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 Where well, any two or three shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done unto them. It shall be established for you. We got to agree on this thing tonight. So when I do this, when I'm telling you to tell your neighbor something, I, it's not because of effect. It's because I need you to agree with the person around you. You yes. might as well, listen, if you got enough faith, agree with your whole section that something's about to happen. Hallelujah. Those of you that are watching on social media, wherever you're watching from, let me just tell you, in your house, in your family, in your home, wherever you are right now, yes. the Lord says, I'm about to show up for yes. you. Just go ahead and start making preparation. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, now, Jesus. Here's one more. One more tell your neighbor. I'll leave you alone for a little while. But tell them this. Say, you have no idea. What's about to come your way? God have mercy. You have no idea what's about to happen for you. You I wish I had a church in here. I said you have no idea what's about to happen for you. Can you possibly up on a hill and so they had to come down a hill to get to the cemetery where they were about to bury the boy and the Bible said that Jesus met her at the gate but let me rewind for about maybe three to five minutes she was on her way down the hill the people were carrying the casket the mourners were behind her and everybody was crying about the death of her boy well in that five minutes before she got to the Woo! bottom of the hill she yes. had what was about to Yes! Yes! Hallelujah! That's how I feel. <laughs> it's about to happen.
woman's crying. Five minutes before she gets to the bottom of the hill, she's weeping because her last bit of hope is gone. Y'all didn't hear me. Let me, let me clear that up for you. In that day, as a woman, it's a predominantly male-dominated society. As a woman, you depended on your husband to be the breadwinner of the home. And if your husband died, then the responsibility of caring for the house now falls on the eldest son. Yeah. Amen. Okay? Yeah. It falls on the son. Okay? I can even prove it by when Jesus was dying. He, we, okay, this is just a little nugget for you. Did y'all notice that after Jesus was in the temple and at the age of 12, and he was confounding doctors and lawyers and all that stuff in the, in the temple and the scribes and all those people. After that, if you look in the Bible, you don't see Joseph mentioned anymore. <coughs> Some of y'all never thought about that. You don't see Joseph mentioned anymore. When Jesus speaks to John, at the, when he's hanging on the cross, and he says, Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. What he was doing was, because he was technically the eldest son. So the responsibility of caring for Mary after his transition should have fallen on, or after wherever Joseph was, we don't have any biblical indicator of where Joseph was. Scholars believe that Joseph had perhaps died at this point. Scholars believe that. I can't say with biblical accuracy or certainty, but that's what scholars say. But the point is, is we don't see him after that particular period. But here's my point. Jesus now, as the eldest son, knows that it's his responsibility to make sure his mother is taken care of. So what does he do? He's now about to be transitioned, and he knows i got to go back to my father after I die and get up. There's only a few days left of me being here. When I get up out of this grave, i got to go. So my mama needs to be taken care of. So he now commissions John to take care of his mother because it was the responsibility of the son to make sure that the mother is taken care of. I said that to bring you back to this widow at name. The Bible specifically calls her a widow. Yes. Which means her husband Her husband is dead. So she knows what it means to deal with grief. She knows what it means to deal with loss. She knows what it means to deal with pain. She knows what it means to hurt. And now, after some undescribed period of her husband being dead, now her only son is dead. She's in a place where things look hopeless. Man. Maybe it's your doctor's report that looks hopeless. Maybe it's your marriage that looks hopeless. Maybe it's the condition of your child that looks hopeless. That's the place where this woman was. I want you to begin to identify in your life. Because let me tell you a secret. For us today, it's possible to be hopeful in some areas and hopeless in others. Mm. That's how we can mask it in church so well. Yo. <laughs> we can mask it in church really well because in some areas of our life, we are hopeful. But in other areas of our life, we are. We don't want to admit that because it makes us seem like we're less spiritual. We don't want anybody to think that we're less spiritual. You know, I want them to think I'm just walking on cloud nine and walking in the favor and the joy of the Lord all the time. But can we be honest and say that when you go home, every now and then you have moments where you're hopeful in some areas, but hopeless in some others. 
I'm about to round third base and slide in the home. Y'all not going to see me coming. But now here's this woman, and she's, she's sliding. She, she's going down this hill. And like I said, you, she didn't know what was about to happen in her life. She had no idea. And seemingly for no reason at all, Jesus starts walking from where he was to name. But he had an appointment. But can we shout not just on the fact that Jesus had an appointment, but the widow at name had an appointment and she didn't even know she was on God's appointment. I need to tell somebody in here tonight that you came in here on this Tuesday night. You thought you were just coming to the healing room. You thought you were coming to Life Abundant Ministry. But let me tell you something. You didn't even know that you were on God's calendar tonight and you had an appointment. The real you had an appointment. Tell somebody else I got an appointment. So I don't know about you, but I got an appointment tonight. Something's going to happen for me. I got an appointment. I don't even know what all God's going to do, but I just know I got an appointment.
what was upside down, God just flipped it right side up. Y'all better get ready, because I'm talking to somebody in this room right now. Y'all might think I am absolutely crazy, but I am telling you tonight that by the end of this year, some of you are going to walk out at a new tax bracket. I need you to praise it if you believe it. But I'm on social security. Who says you gotta be on a fixed thing? I need a church that believes God with me. Who says you gotta be on a fixed thing? Yes! The only person that fixes my income is God. God shall provide. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Yes!
the Holy Spirit saying, I never tell people to quit crying if I'm not about to do something to change it. I don't tell you to stop crying if I'm not about to bring a miracle. I don't tell you to quit crying if I'm not about to turn it around. That's why God said, I sent my yes. apostle in this room tonight to yes. make a declaration to everybody in here. He said, tell them, quit crying. Yes. I'm about to turn some stuff. Yes. Yes. That's why I was about to lose this dude. I still am. So I, was, I felt the fit coming on me. Because he does not make pronouncements by accident. No. All you faith walkers, I hope you know your God is not an incidental nor an accidental God. No, absolutely not. No. Nothing he does or says is haphazard. Nope. Amen. Let me try. Jesus. Do you do you feel me tonight? Oh yes. Oh yes. I'll leave my face. I'll see miracles happen out of all yes. And God says I'm not done. <laughs> not by accident. It wasn't by accident he showed up in name. It wasn't my accident that Pastor Joanne sent and called for me to come back here this week. It wasn't an accident because I'm standing as a representative of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. I'm not him, but I am a representative of him. I am an ambassador of his, and I will sit here with a message from the kingdom that I'm a part of and that I'm an ambassador for, and I come with the same authority of the king and yeah. your home. Yes. With the authority of the king in my yes. mouth. If he sends an ambassador, he sends them with the authority yes. of the king in their mouth. Oh I'm here tonight yes. with the authority of the king in my mouth. And he did not speak it by accident to tell you to quit crying because he knows what's coming next. Oh, 
It says to the point where its birds can even grow in it, and they, I mean, they can even nest in it. What are you trying to say? The real truth of the text is not about the size of the mustard seed. It's simply about the fact that it's the smallest grain. But because it believes in what is on the inside of it, it can't help but manifest what it is. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So all God is waiting for is for you to take what little bit you've got. What everybody else is overlooking as an act of faith. Even when you gave your offer tonight, did you give in faith or did you give just because you were comfortable? Some of you, after this, after this is over, you're going to need to go back in your pocket. I'm not getting any of it. You need to go back in your pocket and give what God wants you to give and not what's comfortable for you. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, no. It's okay. I'm a big boy. Because I'm trying to help people get what God wants them to have. And in the place where stuff has been dead, all God needs is a seed in order to resurrect. Y'all missed, it. missed it. I said all God needs is a seed. In the moment for this widow at Nain, all God needed was a seed. What was her seed? Quit crying. Here's my clothes. Then, after she quits crying, Apparently, they were far enough back, or wherever they were, they were far enough that they were still moving. And the Bible said, and Jesus went and touched the casket, and the carriers of the casket stood still. So obviously, they were still moving. They were still trying to make the progression yes. down the hill. Listen. Don't fool with folks who don't have faith like you. Amen. That's right. That's right. Don't fool with folks that don't have faith like you. Bishop, why are you coming to me tonight? Yes, I see you're in a battle. And I'm not doing it to put you on the spot, but I'm here standing with you tonight in faith. Whatever your battle is, I stand with you. And I'm telling you, don't fool with folk who don't have faith like you've got. Fool with folk who have faith like you have or bigger. Now that's not just for her. But when I stood up tonight, I felt the pull that if I didn't preach to anybody else, when I made the announcement of what my title was, that title was for her. I don't know what's going on. God is not revealing to me. But I know this. I was sent here on assignment. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I know this. And I know this all too well. If I didn't come here to preach to any of y'all, God brought me here this week for this dear lady right here. And he kept impressing on me that one message, the funeral has been so, so y'all do me a favor. Again, I don't know what she's going through. I mean, assumptions can be made, but that's not my job to make an assumption right now. But I need every believer that stands with her in the in the battle that she's in, point at her. <laughs> Stretch your hand her way. Who, who knows her name? Y'all know her name? Sweetie, what's your name? Freedom. Freedom. Everybody, open your mouth tonight as you point towards Rita and say, "Hey, Rita! Hey, Rita! Hey, Rita. The Lord has declared. The Lord has declared. The funeral. The funeral has been canceled. Has been canceled. Yes. Hallelujah."
just talking about medical stuff. I'm talking about any dead thing in your life that needs to be alive. The Lord said, I came in here tonight to declare over you that the funeral has yes. been kept. Worship. You touch 
touch him. Go wait for me to touch you. You touch him. Come on, don't let it die. Push. I'll provoke you in a push tonight. I provoke your faith. We stretched your faith. Now don't wait on me to do it. I'm not laying hands on you tonight because there's a miracle in the room when you touch him. 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 Too often we get accustomed to and we get comfortable with the hands of a man. I don't want you to be comfortable with my hands. I want you to touch the hand of the master.
I speak the word of healing over every person watching right now. Yes. I declare again, yes. for those of you that are watching, the funeral has been canceled. God bless you. Saints, I said it in the height of this moment.